And this is my last poem. It's titled Ferris Wheel. One lucky ride, your seat creaks to the top. The entire contraption groans to a stop. Someone's turn to get off. And you're instantly lost in details of the now miniature carnival. Distant city lights, fields, farms, trees snaking the river until your eyes rest at the rim of the sunset. On cue, stars move from behind evening's deepening curtain, their patterns perfect, while your seat swings like a cradle, rocking the world. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and thank you, Pat. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Much obliged. Much obliged. I wanted to. Um, I wanted I to, to bring up um, from the uh, from the from the start here, and I'm sorry that I forgot to do so. Um, that we are actually recording the session. So if you are not if you're not happy with having the session recorded, I'm fine to just dump it. That's no problem. But I I put. Oh no, out, I, I appreciate it. No That'd problem. be great. I put it out on the pod, on my podcast, and and it can be shared with whomever, and uh, and. It's just a nice way to kind of keep this for posterity because the audio is typically very good and, and uh, just happy to, to do that for everybody. So, Yeah, thank you. Of course, no problem. So um, we're happy to move on to the open mic session. We have, uh, yeah. it, it, just raise your hand visually if you have something that you want to read tonight so I can get an idea of who wants to read. One, two, three. Good, excellent, four, five. Fantastic. Anita, Doug, Scott. Ron, Bonnie, excellent. No, and I can read. Oh, you're not. You're just waving no, hi. Sorry. Hello, how are you? I'm just. Uh, it's just happy to happy <laughs> to know you. Awesome. And I'm going to read too. So, um, let's let's move on. Why don't we? Um, in, Enid, would you like to start us off? And please, if you're not comfortable having your 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 piece read. Because honestly, it's a little difficult to go back in after the fact and scrub it. So if I find out after the fact someone doesn't want it, I just dump the whole thing. So please make it easy. It's, on me. it's okay, me, Connor. And yeah, no, I'm saying yeah. this for everybody. Let let me know um, I, before you read if you'd like me to pause the recording, and I'm happy to do so. Go ahead, Eden. All right. Um, as some of you know, my house has been under construction. I rent a room in an old Victorian house and it's been purchased and um, and it's go undergoing renovation and remodeling for two months now, which is a major disruption to me, but I, I feel like reading things about my house and the west side. So I have a poem for you. I'm gonna read part of a poem called Awake on the West Side and it goes, you know, talks about what's happening at three o'clock and four o'clock and five o'clock. It, it, it's by an insomniac, obviously. So um, this, is a, this is a part. At five o'clock, the asphalt lies cool on Mitchell Terena Bridge. Golden lamps cast fixed shadows. No rolling cars to Xerox, no can pickers, no workers on their bikes, no women on their way to market, no stray dogs, only the little bats whose shadows flit like doubts one may choose to ignore. Just before the lamps extinguish, those bigger doubts, the crows, begin their journey across the sky. At first they speak little and pass for black, but one green crow, a parrot, flies among and shrilly mimics the crow's speech. Several more are not strictly black, but descendants of the west side white crow, random streaks and patches on their wings as if on an errand of mischief, they flew beneath the rain of paint. Blue gum eucalyptus, night jasmine, pittosporum, mingle their oils with a mist of fish and tar. The boys who vault the chain link fence are not locos. 
They're just boys in bleached t-shirts who brag and jostle for position as they wind their way home by the tracks. The old woman stands at her stove heating coffee. Her heavy braid falls to her waist. The boy comes in, closes the door softly. A donde fuiste? Que hiciste? I'm tired, abuelita, he says. Déjame. And he falls asleep in his clothes, resting on his belly. Once again, the child she knows. Wonderful, thank you. thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Enid. Let's go with Scott, Mr. Strina. <laughs> okay, um, this one's called um, After the Divorce, the Mount Shasta Version. Safely inside my bottles of Amstel Light. Enough alcohol, I hope, to drive me drunk and smash my head against a redwood tree because I don't know why I'm in this forest below Mount Shasta as pounding rain hits moistly upon me and I see my ex-wife, Amber, but it's a rainy mirage. It's only her son, Don, who I ask to please tell his mom I'm a nice guy now, and I will never again throw beer bottles at her when she says Israelis are worse than Nazis. And please ask your mom to call me, but Don walks away without saying yes and without saying no, leaving me drunk outside in a cold world Wondering if Don will tell Amber, Amber about the tears he watched dripping down from my cheeks, slowly building up into a flooding river. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Hope you liked it. Absolutely. <laughs> Why don't we go with Bonnie? Now? Yes? Okay. Yes. All right. So I read this poem actually every year around D-Day because my dad was a World War II veteran. So if you've heard it before from me, please forgive. Um, it's actually going to be uh, an appendix in my book, which and my book's going to be that, um, comprised of many of the letters that he wrote during the war. So, and I wrote this in 2004, uh, and he passed away actually just about a month afterwards but one of my sisters read it to him uh, before he passed and I was really grateful anyway um, D-Day 60th anniversary Thousand Oaks California for Abraham Martin Clapper 1915 through 2004 T5 Battery A 581st AAA AW Battalion 49th AAA Brigade 1st Army over 2,000 miles between us now. I sit in a suburban community park on a green hillside surrounded by gardens, listening to a band play 40s tunes, watching 80 plus year olds standing at attention if they can still stand when the song of their branch of the service plays. Everyone applauds them, some wipe away tears. The music makes me remember you, Dad, jitterbugging with your kid sister, Shirley, throwing her over your back, never dropping her, and she always trusting you not to. Now at 89 in a nursing home in Florida, unable to stand, let alone walk, sometimes barely remembering mom's name, hardly able to hear my voice over long distance lines, all you say when I call is, I can't hear you. When are you coming? Forgetting where I live. Can you get me out of here? On my bureau for the past 20 years has been that 44 furlough shot of you in your army uniform, smiling confidently, hat cocked to the side, tie knotted smartly under the collar of your khaki shirt, anti-aircraft command patch on your sleeve. Handsome, broad-shouldered, you hold seven-month-old me wearing a wide-brimmed bonnet and a baby teeth grin. 
in your muscular arms. My 23-year-old, dark-haired, brown-eyed mother holds onto your wrist as if she'll never let go. Only a few years ago did you tell me you'd been on the front lines in an anti-aircraft machine gun crew defending the bridge at Remagen, where the U.S. Army first crossed the Rhine. In Germany, you became your unit's translator because the Yiddish you grew up with was close enough to do the job. In the countryside, when you entered homes to search for weapons or enemy soldiers, you said the inhabitants always sputtered, me, nichts, Nazi but you saw a copy of Mein Kampf in every house. No lover of the military, you joined to fight the Germans who were killing us there so you wouldn't have to fight them here. When you left Fort Dix after your discharge, you refused to salute the last officer you saw, but today, Dad, it's my turn to salute you. Thank you. <clears throat> Wonderful, Bonnie, thank you. I think uh, I want to say that, that this has been the third summer that I've heard you <laughs> share that piece, and it's wonderful. Thank you Thank so you. much. What a, what, a, uh, what a way to honor. Um, Doug. Um, okay. And I um, had uh, three little thoughts. One is about depression in mice. It's because they're nocturnal. I think that they're more comfortable in the dark because they're little furry things that get eaten. That's my scientific idea. Uh, I know who Charles Starkweather is, and I know about Remagen Bridge, so very good. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read a poem that I don't think I've ever read. I wrote it, of course. Uh, and I'll take off from the uh, Nebraska Sunset poems we heard. That's a, that's a joke about, you know, a little dysfunction in this one here. It's called Home Movie in green and white. The pale house with the green shutters open let the afternoon sun into the room where I accidentally hit my sister in the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> not, not during the official season, but during the eternal season of the child. <clears throat> shutters open, the ball flew out like a random pistol shot, yet held the house hostage the windows shook like bird cages with feathers trying to get out. I foolishly tried to hang on inside. The eruptions lasted for years. The sloping Bermuda lawn fell down before the street. My father rolled down the new mown grass, drunk with the neighbor's wife in his arms, both of them laughing, covered with little green blades. I put the baseball bat back and the house settled on a new foundation slightly closer to hell. <laughs> I like that laugh, by the way, whoever did that. <laughs> I want to say that was Anita. It is an elaborate, but I like that laugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to say that was Anita. <laughs> yeah, there hey, it is. Anita confirmed. confirmed. Anita forever. Excellent. <laughs> um, oh, with great poem. <laughs> yes, wonderful, Doug. Thank you. The windows that shake, shook like bird cages is wonderful. I like that very much. Um, I believe, and besides myself, the last we had that rose their hand to read was uh, Rob. You are on mute, my friend. There you are. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to Peg Quinn for a wonderful reading. Um, it's all these, all these little vignettes, all these little worlds that we get to pop in for maybe 60 seconds. It's wonderful. Great collection. Enjoyed it. Um, I'd like to read a poem by um, someone who read it at our TO reading about two years ago. His name is Angel Garcia. And um, he had a book called, I don't know if you can see that, Teeth Never Sleep. <laughs> A wonderful poet, and this is one of the ones that sort of has haunted me all this time. It's called Teeth Never Sleep 2. So here we go. Uh, clearing out what's lived beneath my, my mother's bed, I find in a felt-lined jewelry box a chatter of teeth that prattle in my palm. Though I can't be certain, memory clouded by 20 years of bedside dust, 
I remember once. 